You may be seated, Pastor. The scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So it's good to have you here this morning on this beautiful August Sunday morning. We hope that you're blessed as a result of all the things that you experience here and that you're drawn closer to Christ. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, we hope that you will receive him this morning as a result of hearing the word proclaimed in the Christian fellowship. If you're a newcomer, uh, we would like for you to fill out one of the uh, blue cards that you'll find in the pew racks. Uh, just put your name on that and the other information that's requested and then place it in the offering plate as it comes by and uh, that will give us the opportunity to share with you how glad we were to have you here uh, this morning. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful Sunday morning that you've given us. Father, we thank you for your creation and most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and for the opportunity we have here today to worship him. We ask that in the singing and the fellowship and the proclamation of your word, that all of these things would point us clearly to Christ and that our lives would be firmly founded on your word. Father, we pray that you would be glorified in everything that's done, and we will give you the honor for everything that's accomplished. For it's in Christ's precious name that we pray. Amen. Let's continue on with our service and stand and sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Stand as we sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. seated pastor before Jay comes and uh, and shares the rest of the announcements I wanted to just share uh, briefly with you about a couple of things that you find listed in the bulletin uh, and the first one is on this blue insert uh, the biblical parenting class uh, we're going to be offering this uh, with the first Sunday beginning on September the 10th it will be at 6 o'clock over in the Ministry Center. And uh, we're going to be doing this for six sessions, um, six weeks. And there's no homework involved with this. Uh, there's no book that you have to read, although there is a book you can read if you would like. We just want you to come and, and, and enjoy and benefit from these things that we have to share with you. The actual title of the workshop is Shepherding Your Child's Heart. And I've read a lot of biblical material on raising kids. Uh, this is the best that I've come across. Uh, and, I, and I've read a lot of Dobson. Uh, so this is very, very biblically sound material. And it's to give you insight uh, in this parenting process. It's a mindset change because it's not so much about behavior. It's about leading the child to Christ and then discipling him in Christ, which is really a very biblical thing, but it's something that often escapes our focus uh, as, as we're in the parenting process. So this is for parents of kids age 2 up to maybe age 20 if they're still at home. Uh, and even if you're a grandparent 
uh, there's some good things that you can get from this. So, but we have a sign-up sheet in the back, and so we would like for you to, uh, uh, to sign that uh, and, and indicate that you'd like to come uh, so we'll know how many are coming. We also have child care that will be available upon request. So if you need child care for that, uh, please indicate that as well, and we're providing the child care so that parents would be more likely to come. And so anyway, we have a, a short uh, promo for that, so I want to share that with you briefly uh, before we go on. Jay? Shepherding Child's Heart is a paradigm book, and it's a paradigm shift from a focus on managing and controlling uh, children to nurture. It's not about modifying behavior, it's not about um, having well-behaved children, it's about introducing a child's heart to Christ, and, and it constantly brings it back to that, which is really, really good. So I want parents to be focused not just on getting the behavior they want, but on understanding their kids' hearts, really helping their kids to understand their hearts. We can get behavioral responses, but we know that it's easy for a child to be you know, standing up on the outside and sitting down on the inside, that sort of thing. And then one other thing I want to mention is the Good News Club. Uh, we did receive approval from the Taylor County Board of Ed, and so that's moving ahead at Anna Jarvis. And so we need volunteers for that. We need those quickly because uh, there's a paperwork process that needs to be followed. You need to have be background checked, that sort of thing. So, but we could use more and more helpers there uh, to shepherd the kids. And of course, there's a WANA program here. Uh, if you'd like to participate in that, uh, see Lisa, uh, see Jonathan, or you can see me, and we'll get you plugged into that. Uh, both of these programs are important. They're different in nature, but they're very important. And so we need you for both of those. And so again, see the appropriate folks uh, for Good News Club, me or Sonia Knotts, uh, for Awana, see uh, Lisa, Jonathan, or me, and we'll be glad to, uh, to plug you in. Okay, Jay? Oh, yeah, sorry. Scotty, you want to come up and sing? recruited some help this morning. All right, join us, will ya? <clears throat> Bless the Lord, all my soul. 
Scotty, for that message and song. This time, Jay's going to come and share our announcements. Morning. Good morning. All right. Let's see. We got our picnic coming up here right after this service. So come on down to Castle Creek. There, bring two of your favorite picnic foods: your swimsuit, folding chairs, and a friend. Those of you without friends, just uh, go ahead and uh, you know, recruit some somewhere. <laughs> All right, we're looking for volunteers for Children's Church for uh, September, October. See Janice DeVault if you can sign up there. And there's no choir practice Wednesday. You guys got that? No choir practice. So, and uh, Awana, we're still looking for uh, leaders uh, uh, and volunteer meeting. That'll be uh, next Sunday at 5 p.m. in the Ministry Center. So if you can come out for that. Or if there's anybody, anyone else would like to help, please see Lisa Manier and see. Oh, I was also told there's uh, some extra things over in the ministry center that have kind of accumulated from our vacation Bible school, our walkthroughs and, you know, donations and usage. So we've got like Christmas trees and, you know, I, I don't know, all types of stuff. There's some in the uh, nursery, there's some in the one classroom. So if you got stuff that we borrowed, and we haven't, you know, it's over there. So please get it so we can. Come look at it. Yeah, come look at it. They, there was a nice suggestion. They want me to take a picture of it and, like, put it up here and shame you into coming and getting your stuff <laughs> or something. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, if you can, you know, if you got some stuff over there that we, we borrowed, thank you. Take it home now. <laughs> All right. Yes, please. Um, and the secret place devotionals for the fall quarter, they're back there on the back table. So pick those up. Let's see what else we got on the insert there. We've got, yeah, you saw about the class there, the Good News Club. Operation Christmas Child. Now that's uh, coming up, so uh, with the backs to school sales going on right now, that's a great time to look for some of the stuff that you can stuff in your, uh, your, your Christmas box. So be, uh, be looking for that. We, we've got the uh, goal set of 275 for this year. I believe we ordered uh, like 300 of those. If you haven't seen the video out there, we might have to show that one of these days. But there's these, these nifty boxes that are coming. They're uh, real durable for this year. So that'll be really, really great. Um, so be sure to be ready for that. Okay, let's see. What do we got? We got uh, there's another picture on the paper. Skylar did another great job. I think she was second overall there in the uh, GH at Grafton won their season opener. So good job, Skylar, there with that. 
She's, uh, we'll probably keep on seeing pictures of her throughout the golf season here. So good job. Congratulations. Okay, birthdays. We've got uh, Jerry White, Thea Dye, Hayden Robinson, Jamie Knight, Carl Moran, Mike Swisher, Jeff Dodge, Britt Schrock, and Beulah Baptist Church. So there we go. And uh, anniversaries, we've got Greg and Sabrina Weber and D David and Donna Jolliffe. So happy birthday, happy anniversary to everybody. And uh, let's see here, our scripture reading comes out of Deuteronomy. And Jim's going to come and read that to us. Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, let's see, Matthew, Mark, Luke, no, there it is, uh, 4 through 7. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Hey Jim, and if our ushers will come, we'll take up our morning offering. Terry Mayfield, if you pray for the offering, please. This time we have a special from the choir.
Thank you, choir. At this time, we have specials from the sessions. Come on down, or up, rather. We're to the age where you take the shortest route. I can remember when I was the age of this little fellow down here, the youngest one. It was nice. Telling my dad I didn't want to sing. He said, yes, you will. <laughs> and that was the end of that tune. And I sang. My mother also was one that uh, was musically inclined. Any of you that might have heard my mother play, she was a concert pianist and then dedicated her entire life of music ministry to gospel music. And um, she was a delight to all of us and God took, he, took her home because he needed a piano player up there for the choir, I guess. But we appreciate these young people taking part in the service and what have you, it's always a blessing. Do you believe today this is one song that uh, is dedicated to believing. When I see the sunrise in the morning and I feel the wind blow It's all a part of God's amazing grace. And I believe there's a place called heaven. And I believe there's a place called hell. My dad preached for 65 years, preached his last sermon, and died two hours later. I was there the day that my daddy went to heaven. I held his hand as he closed his eyes in I felt the power of 10,000 angels take his soul away to be the ground of Jesus' feet. And I believe there's a place
believe that today? <coughs> this is a song that scares my wife to death. Uh, we haven't sung it in so long that uh, we had to practice it several times in the last two or three days. And I'm still uh, not sure of it. She's still not sure of it. So bear with us. It's got a message that is very strong and good. That's why I insisted on us singing it today, and I trust that you'll um, bear with us. But I'm pretty sure that we'll make it through. She's the only one that's scared. I, by the way, I told the pastor, I don't sing anything on any of these songs. She sings both parts, and I just move my mouth. But... Uh, one of these days, if you've never found Christ and you walk the Calvary Road, you'll never be the same. I wasn't there at Calvary's cross that day when they nailed my Savior there. I wasn't there when they pierced his side, placed a thorn crown. There was love beneath the pain, and once you walk Calvary's road, you will never be the same. And when you walk. When he rose up from the grave, cause no power on earth could keep him there. He came forth in victory, and now that blood that flows from Calvary's road. Is flowing through my veins, and since I walked down Calvary's road, I have never been the same. Your veins 
When you touch his nail-scarred hand And when you walk that road You will never be the same To feel his love flow through your veins When you touch his name's gone For when you walk that road You'll never be the same You'll never be the same Thank you, Jay and Carolyn, for those messages and song. Let's take our hymnals and turn to 498. When we all get to heaven, and we'll let the kids go ahead and go down for junior church. Number 498, stand as we sing. plays the next verse we'll let the choir get down and you quickly quickly greet one another And the last verse. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to our prayer time this morning, we certainly want to give thanks uh, for Beulah Baptist Church for 199 years of being in existence. What a wonderful thing. And you see some special recognition there in the bulletin. And so just feel free to look over that, see the names that are written there, the history that's uh, provided for you. And just uh, give thanks for that. 
uh, as well, not only during this prayer time, but throughout uh, this coming week. And the, the list is there of the folks that we've honored, and that was a, a tradition of, of Reverend McDonald's, a very um, a wonderful tradition that uplifted a lot of people. Uh, I was praying about this, I've been praying about it a lot, and so I really feel led just to, to bring that to a close with the recognition of Reverend McDonald last year. Uh, and so if during my pastoral term, I don't feel led to continue that as far as recognizing each person each year, each pastor do different things different ways. So, but we still want to give thanks uh, for all of these individuals and just for everybody. I mean, you've got uh, folks here that are listed that have been in the church uh, quite a while. Uh, and so we certainly thank God for years of faithful service. And so just, just give God praise for that, that, uh, that he's done what he's done in this church, that he's brought us to the point where we are. He's seen us through uh, good times, he's seen, seen us through not so good times, and now we're beginning to start on our 200th year uh, of existence a, as a congregation. That, that's just a rather rare thing, uh, especially for churches nowadays. They tend to come and go, a lot of churches are newer, and so we're just blessed uh, in that way. There's a lot of uh, prayer concerns there in, in the bulletin, so pray for those things. Uh, pray for those who are ill. Pray for our country. Everybody's heard about, or most people have heard about, what's happened down in Charlottesville. Uh, and lots of people have been making statements on that. I'm not going to make a statement on that other than to say that this is just another symptom of a society that needs to repent and needs to get right with God. Uh, that, I mean, it's, it's a horrible thing. Uh, and so, but, but this is just one other indication. It's a long line of indicators now that we need to turn from our sin and turn to God. Uh, and we need to see people born again, and we need to see Judeo-Christian values more firmly entrenched in our society. That's the root of the problem. And so we don't want to get so caught up with the symptom that we neglect the root of the situation, and that is we just need to turn to God, and we need Christ uh, to give us new life. So let's pray for our country as well uh, on this particular Sunday. So you may have other concerns on your hearts and minds, Lift those up as well. Always pray for the lost and pray for them by name. So let's have a few moments of private meditation, and after that we'll be led together in our prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, on this anniversary Sunday, there is really nothing much better than that we could be hearing right now than the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Father, you have been so good to us as a congregation. You have been faithful to us over the past 199 years. Father, that's a long time for all of us here, but for you, that's just a moment. But Father, regardless, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the countless lives that have been brought to new life in Christ as a result of the ministry of this congregation. And Father, we pray that we would always realize the, the great legacy that's been handed down to us. And now as we face the future, may we be faithful to you as you have been faithful to us. May we be faithful in being based upon your word. May we honor scripture always in everything that we do, holding it high as our only infallible rule of faith and practice. Father, we pray that we would be grounded in our relationship with Christ, that we would continue to reach out and lead others to a saving knowledge of Jesus. And may we understand that that is our great commission and never lose sight of it. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to be faithful in raising future generations to be rightly related to Christ and then to become 
fully serving disciples of Jesus. Father, we pray this morning for our country that you would send a great revival upon us. We pray for all of those who are heartbroken as a result of what's happened in Charlottesville. And Father, may we as believers just see this as yet another example and another reason to pray, to fall to our knees and ask you to do a great work in our land. And may it begin with each one of us here at Beulah Baptist. Heavenly Father, for unspoken requests this morning, we pray that you would provide for them. For those who are ill, uh, bring healing to their bodies. Father, for those who have other situations, provide as only you can. Father, this morning we pray that as we open up your word, that it would speak to our hearts and minds, and that it would encourage us to follow after you in greater ways. Father, we thank you for our church. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our homes. But most of all, we thank you for our relationship with Christ. May we continue to grow in that relationship and share it with those who are lost, that they too may embrace Jesus. For it's in his precious and his powerful name that we ask all these things today. Amen. Today we celebrate, as I've already said, the 199th anniversary of the founding of Beulah Baptist Church. There's an insert in your bulletin regarding the heritage of the church and it's a rich and a fascinating one and that's just a small snippet of, of what you can find if you dig into some more of the history you'll find some some amazing things there it's important to learn from the past it's important to cherish the past it's important to give god thanks for all he has done in this congregation over the past nearly two centuries it's also important to be inspired by the past and the folks that we have known that have now gone on to be with Christ, uh, other folks of which we have only heard or we've read about, to be inspired by what they've done. But still, at the end of Beulah's 199th year and as we begin opening the 200th year, it's also critical that we look forward and see what God has for us in the present as well as in the future. And so this morning's passage in Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 7, is one in which the people of Israel were closing one chapter of their lives, and they were standing at the threshold of a new chapter of their lives. They'd been delivered from Egypt by God's mighty hand, then they'd been led through the Red Sea uh, on dry land. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until an unbelieving generation died off. And even in the midst of their unbelief, God provided for them during that 40 years in the desert. Now they are ready to start a new era. The wilderness is behind them. A new and exciting, unfamiliar territory is before them. So Moses gives them the law a second time. Now the word Deuteronomy actually means second law. It's not another law at all, but it's, it's a second presentation of the original law that God had given with strong encouragement to follow it and warnings for what would happen if they departed from it. And so this morning's passage from Deuteronomy 6 is a part of the Jewish Shema. Uh, it's an ancient summary of Jewish belief. It's actually recited uh, at least twice a day by many devout Jews. It's important to the Jews. And it's important to Christians today who worship the King of the Jews, Jesus Christ. So there's four things to grasp from it as you start a new chapter in your life, as we start a new chapter in the church, and perhaps as you start a new type of chapter in families, whatever it may be, as God is leading you from one era into another, there are four things here to keep in mind. And as we often do, we're going to do the first two points of the message today and the next two points next Sunday morning. Deuteronomy 6, 4 begins, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. Now these words, hear, O Israel, were important for the ancient Jewish people, and they're important for followers of Jesus Christ in 2017. It's more here than just pay attention. In the Hebrew mindset, it means much more than just that. So it means pay attention, but, but there's an additional meaning there. Now, a lot of us have heard the, the phrase, or we've used the phrase today, pay attention to what I say. We've said to our kids, are you listening to me? We've done that again and again. I know I've done that. As sometimes I'm even tempted to do that with my grandchildren, not as much. 
And it even is more prominent in marriages where the wife will say to the husband, honey, are you listening to me? And, and, and in our marriage, and I know no one else has this kind of situation, but with my relationship with Jeannie, sometimes she will say, look me in the eye. <laughs> because I'm talking now, and you need to pay attention to what I'm saying. Because, heaven forbid that I not remember something she said, or maybe not even listen, but I do that. So I've learned that over 30 years of marriage, so that, that happens. Sometimes I just don't listen. So, so she so say, look me in the eye. Uh, listen to what I'm telling you, and so then when that eye contact is there, and when she's really got me honed in, then she's hoping then that I'll remember what I've been told. Like I said, no other wives surely have that experience, but I've been there as a husband, and so, but, but it's, it's basically, hear old David, you know, here, listen to what I'm saying. So, well, on a much grander scale here, God is saying, hear O Israel. So he's getting their attention, but he's also in saying that, He's saying that I want you to obey what I'm saying you. So in the, it's saying to you. So in the Hebrew mindset, to hear, especially in regards to a covenant, is much more than just listening. To hear means to obey when it comes to a Jewish way of looking things. So in the Jewish mindset, if obedience doesn't follow the hearing, then there really hasn't been any hearing at all. So to hear is to obey. The two are woven very closely together. So when the, this verse begins, hear, O Israel, what God is actually saying is hear and obey, O Israel. In the Experiencing God classes that we've been having, the focus lately has been on the critical nature of obedience. And we can talk about obedience, we can pray about obedience, we can sing about obedience, we can come to church and learn about obedience, uh, we can do all kinds of things and circle around and around obedience, but there comes a time when we actually have to obey God and do what he says for us to do. The talking needs to be over, the singing needs to come to an end. Sooner or later we need to actually obey what God would have us to do. I've also been reviewing the Ted Tripp material uh, that we're going to be offering in, in uh, September for the biblical parenting class. And obedience in that material is stressed again and again. Children can say, Mom, I'm going to obey. Yeah, Dad, I'll get right to it. Uh, that sort of thing. Well, I meant to obey, and you know, I really didn't, or I got sidetracked with something else, whatever. Sooner or later, obedience has to take place. So obedience is critical. So as you start a new chapter of life, whatever it may be, hear and obey God's word to you. Now, I read this last week about a man who was incredibly frustrated. He said, I saw a bumper sticker that said, honk if you love Jesus. So I honked, and a policeman gave me a ticket for disturbing the peace in a hospital zone. Another sign said, smile if you love Jesus. So I smiled. I smiled all day. And by the end of the day, people thought I was a politician. So another sign said, wave if you love Jesus. So I waved with both hands, and I lost control of my car, and I crashed into the back of the Baptist bus. <laughs> oh, Lord, if I can't honk, if I can't smile, or I can't wave, how will people know, and how will you know that I love you? And the response to that question is, the way that you show that you love Jesus is by obeying him. And the way you show other people you love Jesus is by obeying him. Hear and obey, O Israel. Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you then love me, you will obey what I command. Obedience is better than a Christian bumper sticker. It's better than sharing a Christian meme on Facebook. It's better than a Christian t-shirt or a picture of Jesus hanging on your wall at home. Obedience is critical for followers of Christ. Hear and obey. O Israel. And so as you start a new chapter of life, start it right with obedience to God. So the first point of this morning's message as you begin a new era is to revere the Lord only. Treasure him, worship him, and no one else. He is the only one that's deserving of your ultimate obedience and loyalty. Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Now, there's a lot of theology in this verse. 
it speaks of God being one, of course. And even though we know God to be three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He's still one God. One God, three persons, that's the doctrine of the Trinity. It's hard for us to wrap our minds around that. It's been hard for theologians for centuries to wrap their minds around that, but that's the biblical concept. One God, three persons. So this verse speaks of His singularity. He's one God. But it also speaks of God's uniqueness. Another way to translate this is to say, the Lord is the one and only. In a world that offers a variety of gods to worship, a variety of people and things and experiences around which you can center your life, He is the one and only God. He is the one and only around which you can center your life. There is no other. There is no one or nothing else deserving of your worship. There's no one or nothing else deserving of your devotion. No one or nothing else is worthy of your reverence. So revere him alone. He is the one, the one true God. Always acknowledge him for being the one and only God that he is. That's the first thing. Second, as you begin a new era, devote yourself to the Lord. Verse 5 says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Because you revere God as the one, devote yourself to him. Now verse 4 focuses more on attitude. You you look upon God as as the one and only. He's he's singular. He's unique. But verse 5 focuses on your affection. In Matthew 22, 37, Jesus quotes this verse as the first and the greatest commandment. And as the book of Deuteronomy unfolds, the people are warned time and time again of the dangers of forgetting the Lord your God. It happened to the people of Israel. Later, evil kings would lead them away from the one true God to worshiping other gods. And much later, the Pharisees of Jesus' time focused on outward obedience to Jewish ritual, and that became their God. Their affections were far from the one true God, so much so that they didn't recognize God when he was standing before them in the flesh in Jesus Christ. Losing devotion to the Lord also happened with the early church. It's something that's that's very easy to occur. It's something upon which we always need to be watching and we need to be on guard. Listen to to Jesus' words to the church at Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. Listen to what he says. I know your works, your toil and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. I know you're enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and yet you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen, repent and do the things you did at first. So in the midst of all of the deeds that they're doing and all the things that they're doing and all the service that they're rendering, they've still lost that intimate relationship with God that initially thrilled their hearts. As you begin a new era, devote yourselves to the Lord. Following Jesus is so much more than going through the motions. I've been saved uh, since age six, and so I've been in church a long time, and I know it's tempting to to come into churches, sing the same songs, stand up at the same time, sit down at the same time, go out at about the same time, maybe eat in some of the same places. I don't know. You just kind of get into a rote, and pretty soon you're just going through the motions. We always need to understand that our relationship with Jesus Christ is fresh. It's new. And so as we yield ourselves to his word and his Holy Spirit works in our lives, God is is revealing things from his word to us. He's illuminating that word. He's applying it to our lives day after day. It's an exciting thing to walk with Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. It's never boring. It's never dull. And if you think it's boring or dull, your heart is in the wrong place. And something needs to be changed. Now, one of the great dangers of this present time and I know what time it is, so, but, but we're going to do this anyway. We're almost done. One of the great dangers of this present time is that we don't have enough time. Uh, we're too busy. We've got too many things going on. And some people may say, well, I don't have time to read my Bible, preacher. I mean, I just, I get up early, I go off to work, I work all day. It's crazy. I mean, if you, under, if you only knew my schedule, and then I come back home at night, I'm tired. You know, i got to go to bed. There's kids to take care of. There's all these things. I just don't have time to read my Bible. Or, I don't have time to pray. 
I mean, maybe I can drive down the highway and pray a little bit if the kids are kind of quiet and not too rowdy. And of course, I don't close my eyes, that sort of thing. So maybe I can pray a little bit. So, but really, I just don't have time to pray. Or I don't have time to come to church because I've got too many other things to do. And, and so, you know, I, I, it's the only time I've got to get some rest is on the weekends because I work all through the week. Now, I realize that work schedules can get hectic. And I realize sometimes work schedules interfere and family responsibilities can get heavy. I understand all that. But still, people always manage to find time to do the things they really value. It happens again and again and again. You find something that you really want to do, you're going to find time to do that. Everyone is storing up treasures of, of things that are important to them. It's, it's the activities, it's the things in which you invest your time and, and your energy. That's why Jesus commanded that the treasures that you accumulate be eternal in nature rather than temporal in nature. So for the things where you really want to do and the things that your heart's really set upon, let those be eternal things. And if they're not, and if they're not revolving around Jesus Christ, then repent of that kind of attitude and ask the Holy Spirit to change your heart. And he will as you offer your life up to him as a living sacrifice. That's why Jesus commanded here that your treasures be eternal, not temporal. Jesus says in Matthew 6, verses 19 through 21, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So when you devote yourself to the Lord, do you know what that means? He is your treasure. He's more important than anyone or anything else participating in watching sports or participating in sports or watching sports is, is, is a good thing. I, I do some of that, but it's not your treasure. Wearing the latest clothes are not your treasure. Being accepted by the popular crowd is not your treasure. Having a large home or a six-figure income or seven figures in the bank at some point, that's not your treasure. And as far as the church, having a lot of programs going on at the same time is not your treasure. Having a higher attendance is not your treasure. All of these things have their place. None of them are sinful in and of themselves. But when you devote yourself to God, and when you love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might, He is your treasure. Understand that. Grasp that at this point in time in the life of the church and in your own life. David said in Psalm 42, 1, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O Lord. Paul said in Philippians 3, 8, I count everything as loss compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. David's treasure was in his God. Paul's treasure was in his Lord. As you begin a new era, as an individual perhaps, as a family perhaps, definitely as a church, devote yourself to the Lord and make the Lord Jesus Christ your treasure. So this morning, if you think about it for a bit, where is your treasure? Just kind of allow the Lord's Holy Spirit to, to look into your heart and to, to show you where that treasure is. It could be a particular person. It could be a particular activity. It could be a particular possession. I don't know, but the Lord does. And as you ask the Lord to reveal that to you and show that to you, he will. If you've never turned from sin to Jesus and you've never asked for his new life, then you have no true treasure. Now, you may have friends, you may have a nice house, you may have fairly decent health, but you have no true eternal treasure because the only true eternal treasure is knowing Christ as Lord. Only he is truly worth living for. Have you savored the true relationship or the true treasure of a relationship with Jesus, but now you've discovered someone or something else that's taken the place that only he should have? At one time, he had that. At one time, he was your first love, like the church at Ephesus, but now something else has risen up. It may be kind of close to Jesus, but it's not Jesus himself. Jesus wants to be and demands to be your treasure. 
And so the thing for you to do is repent of that sin and to turn back to him and say, Lord, you occupy the supreme place in my life. I want you in the center and no other. Today may be the beginning of a new era for you. God may be working in your life in some way. God may be calling you to to revere him alone and to devote yourself to him. This morning, what is your treasure on this particular anniversary Sunday of Beulah Baptist Church? Is it the Lord Jesus Christ or is it something else? You alone need to decide. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this passage that you've given us. It's it's from your word. Your word's always powerful. And so we pray that now your Holy Spirit would take this word that that has been preached and that would just cause these these seeds of Scripture to, to pop up in lives and produce fruit. Father, we pray that you would illumine our minds and our hearts and you would apply these passages to us and show us the ways in which we can follow you more closely. Father, for those who don't know Christ as Savior, may they say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, come into my life, make me a new person. For those here who need to restore Christ to the first place again, may they do so. But Father, however you're speaking to us through your word, may we be faithful not just to hear, but to obey. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask it. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is number 374. Jesus calls us. We'll do the first and the last verses. Let's stand. Jerry Eisman, would you close us in prayer, please?